Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Stalker Gamma Ecologist run, where we are playing Dr. Krominov. The ecologist who does not do assassination missions, and does not loot armor and weapons from dead bodies. Last episode, we went to Radar and finished the artifact mission there for the ecologists. It was a pretty hard mission to do, we had to fight chimeras, pseudo-giants and controllers, oh my, but we managed to do it even after getting lost a bit in the radar forest and uh, having trouble finding the last artifact, but we did have an amazing artifact hunt and we came back with a huge haul of artifacts. I actually have to note this down, go to radar for artifact hunting in the forest, it's dangerous, but the payoff is huge. After that, we went to the Dead City. There were two more artifacts there, which we managed to get. And we took our new mission to go to Jupiter. And we need to talk with an ecologist right here to continue on with... I'm just gonna wait until that anomaly finishes. Right. But we're going to have to talk to the next doctor in line, the ecologist in Yanov Station. Now, between episodes, I actually did another big run of stashes and artifacts. And I also grabbed all our stuff from the Dead City base. And I moved it through the Red Forest all the way into Jupiter. So... I introduce you to our new stash location, which is in Yanov Station in Jupiter. I also grabbed a few missions. In the meantime, mostly turn-in missions, a couple of mutant hunts, I think, which we will do today. But first of all, we're going to have to turn in all the missions that we have here. And uh, one thing... I want to mention, which I only learned now, and I feel very inadequate as a stalker content creator for not knowing this, but I used to sell artifacts to Professor Sakharov or any other ecologist because they normally offered the best prices. What I did not know is that if you do artifact missions, artifact turn-in missions, they actually do take condition into account. So, we have a mission to turn in a sparkler and a colobok, and I actually tested this beforehand, and I reloaded the save, and I gave a colobok which was at 20%, I think, and it, turned, it gave back like 6,000 rubles completely worthless but we now have both the sparkler and the colobok at 99 percent as i said i did do a few more artifact runs and mutant hunts between episodes and we do have a pretty good stash of artifacts so i managed to upgrade these all the way up and when we turn them in we'll see what difference it makes so let's start with a pseudo giant eye which nets us about 13,000 rubles, which is amazing. And... Ilka, the master. Kolobok, 46,000. And the Kolobok is not a high tier artifact. The first time I tried this, I think I got 80,000 for something. I don't remember what artifact it was. But yes, we're gonna get rich. No, this. Rick Trooper. Have some snork hands. We no longer need them for hip. We already have her. And finally, we have Hip's delivery from Lukash. So, hey Loki, delivery from Lukash. We gave him the scientific medical packages, which were free kilos, so that's gonna help us out a little bit. And he says, yeah, this will help. One good turn deserves another, as the old cliché goes. Here, take this suit. Its old owner won't be needing it anymore anyways. 
and he gave us a guardian of freedom suit which um, I mean we'll we'll just find a place to sell it I think okay what's next we can actually take the um, let's let's go and sell that suit I think we should be able to moment the game is actually a little bit loud for me so I am going to turn it down so I can hear myself think and of course he wants a guardian of freedom for 7,000 rubles completely useless oh 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 we'll come back to that as soon as I turn in the rest of my missions. And, uh... You know what? I'll still keep the Sphere M12. Because, uh, in case this one breaks, I can fix it. But I'll definitely buy the Exo Helmet. And hopefully, at some point, we will see an exosuit drop so I can exchange it for an ecologist one. Until then, we are still rocking the monolith Cat 9. And here's our next professor, ecologist guy. Vladislav Zhuk, I think, right? Hello, I was told you might have some work for me. He doesn't even say hello back. Every artifact, even of the same kind, has a unique radiation depending on the place where it was found. The zone left a unique imprint on each of them, which cannot be confused with anything else. Knowing the full spectrum of radiation, we can make a psionic map of the zone. Understand the origins of those disturbances that caused the zone, or maybe manage them. Ambitious plans. I do actually. Yeah, this this uh, this dialogue should be reviewed. <laughs> there are a few anomalous fields I want to study. However, for the moment, I am stuck here and I cannot leave the area. I will mark the anomalies I am interested in on your PDA. I hope you know what to do. Sakharov will be pissed if I don't find anything. Okay, so we have three locations which are all pretty close by so wipe that helmet a little bit and we have the anomalous grove that's gonna be very heavy chemical damage we've got the bitumen anomaly which from what i remember is uh very very hot we're gonna have to take the red suit and finally the concrete bath which once again is uh, a toxic anomaly so yeah let's um let's go back in and um I'll, I'll grab all the gear i need and then i'll run to the ecologist base to turn in the other missions and i will see you all there all right here we are let's put this weapon away oh we have a legend legendary loner here pretty cool and uh i mean no one's gonna want to join me but step on the job is done that's three chimera horns for twenty-two thousand. Sparkler, 17,000. Huh. I would have thought it would have sold for a bit more. Well, can't win them all, I guess. Still better than the maybe 2,000 they would have given me otherwise. And Bloodsucker Meat for 3,000. How many rubles do we have? 11,000. 115,000. Well, and I forgot to drop the alt artifact melter at home. 
All right. Well, hopefully. Okay, let's clear the area of these mutants, then we will go back home, drop the artifact melter, and continue on with our mission, and hopefully we will get enough money to be able to get that Exo Helm, which sadly won't be upgraded for a while. Okay, we're back. I dropped the artifact melters, and I'm near the first artifact site and we're already taking damage yeah that that has a huge reach so this is the anomalous grove and uh, I checked and both our suits have the same chem resistance so I decided to take just this one since we're gonna deal with a burning anomaly anyway might as well not carry two of them so we need a lot of chemical resistance, which the boar pelt gives a little bit, 21%, actually quite a lot, side dog fur another 21%, and we also have these two little things, bracelet, which gives 58%, I had like five bracelets and I combined them all, and a stone flower, which increases it another 15%. So I'm not sure what percentage our chem resist is, but we should be pretty fine. And I actually don't have the better chemical resist drug. I forgot what it's called, so we'll just take an antidote to give us just a little bit more resistance. All right. And with that, I think we can do a quick rush and get both of these artifacts. The bra bracelet there, and where is the other one? And the sponge we needed for the mission. <sighs> and we are taking some damage, but it's nothing compared to what we would have taken without these artifacts on us. Okay gonna have to switch back to our proper armor and yeah and our proper gear we have a bracelet I'm gonna just put it in there right next up the bitumen anomaly which is right here now I do know there was something about this particular anomaly that made you... Uh, it, it gets a little bit confusing in there. I'm never sure where the artifact is and I think there's also a cave full of snorks near that place. Yeah, it's... it's kinda weird. Okay, we have some snorks. are you guys fighting? Oh, another snow. Okay. So, let's do this again. And I will take all my belts, I think. Not that it really matters, maybe the rupture resistance. Because if we're gonna be fighting snorks. Yeah, we don't really have anything better. Okay, yeah, there are some burny anomalies over here. Also, it. Okay. I'm not sure what that was. Oh, great. And we have gravity anomalies in here as well. But I already spotted the artifact. It's the easy anomalous sample. But where is the other one? Oh. Nope. 
Okay, I have no idea where this artifact might be, so let's just, uh, let's not overstay our welcome here. The suit took a little bit of damage, but honestly, not a problem. Right, so we're gonna go back to our original armors and belts. Perfect. Oh! Okay, who's fighting hip? Why are you running? Let me guess, you spotted another snork. Oh! I gotta say, I love the storms in Gamma. If you guys don't know about it, uh, the storms are normally disabled by default. And I have noticed a few issues with them. Uh, usually, when a storm starts, it doesn't just uh, turn back to normal weather. But first, apparently, it turns into rain, so you end up having rain for the whole day. But yeah, storms are turned on by default. But you can turn them back on in the weather menu. I think it's uh, just in the standard options, not even in the mod options. So if you like this type of weather, me, I just turned on storms and turned off the standard rain. Because there's just something about the sound of distant lightning that is amazing. And not just distant, but I don't know. All all thunder sounds are beautiful to me. Okay, so I don't see any enemies around. But this anomaly, if I remember correctly, so you see you have those pillars over there inside a pool of water full of toxic anomalies there is a little bit of a spot there that you can't re reach from the pool i mean maybe with vaulting we could oh never mind i can see an artifact over there okay i'm sorry about that it was a little bit of a lag spike Yeah, I have noticed that lately Jupiter is a little bit laggy. Oh, we're getting a sunset in the rain. Look at those colors. Oh god, I love that. Alright, so... The artifact, looks like, is over there. But sometimes it spawns on that little platform. And you couldn't reach it unless you actually went on this little walkway here and to get to this walkway the stair the ladder is broken here so you'd have to walk along the fence all the way up here and jump down on the walkway the doors aren't functional so you can get there any other way but now that we have vaulting you can just do this Yeah, I feel like vaulting might have broken the game a little bit. <laughs> Alright, oh! Oh, the artifact. Well, not that. Not the mission artifact, but... This one, which is a jellyfish, actually did spawn... ...in the weird place. Alright, let's put our... ...cam resist back on. Not this. Is it right? Hide. There we go. Never mind. Wrong again. Oh, yep. And. <clears throat> oh, actually, um, I'm gonna correct myself. You could reach the. You could reach the platform over there, even without uh, shimming by the fence, but. 
Doing the fence thing was actually easier. You can also do it, and I think that's the intended way, by jumping from pillar to pillar. But you know what? That's that's for Mario players. We're stalking here. Right, so those were the first three artifacts. I see we have a military stalker over there, which is pretty cool. And you know what? Let's do something that we didn't plan today. Since there's a military stalker in there, it means that the area is clear of uh, very big and angry enemies like Monolith, Sin, or Unisig. And that means we can get inside the heart of the Oasis. Or we can get to the puzzle which leads us to the heart of the Oasis artifact. And since it is one of our main objectives to get that, I should stay away from this base. Why not just do it right now? Okay, so here is the exit spot from the Heart of the Oasis puzzle. And believe me, I have tried to vault all the way up there, but uh, there's invisible walls all around. So, they thought of it. When they added vaulting, I think, they thought about this and uh, they decided to lock us out. So we can't break this mission with vaulting. But, you know what? The puzzle is actually more interesting. At the first glance, because actually it's just a trial and error. Alright, let's switch back to HP, because I'm expecting at least some mutants over there. And also, I will take a rad resist drug. And most importantly, we gotta switch out the armors again. That's the one. And maybe put these in some containers, because we don't want to get irradiated. Alright, so this is the entrance. I'll show it to you on the map. It's this little train station right here. And again, watch out, there's usually a uh, monolith and uh, well, monolith send unisig. But sometimes there are friendly stalkers, in this case military. But if you're playing loner, well, military is not your friend. And this is the entrance to the actual puzzle area. Now, I may get lost in here because I don't, for the life of me, remember the way. But uh, we'll just walk around until we find it. Probably in one of these pipes. Hmm. It's not that door. It's probably not gonna be up here. Where is it? Hmm. Oh, there we go. So, last pipe on the right, climb, and then climb the other two pipes. And we're here. A little bit dark. Usually it's not as dark in here. And get ready to see this, hall this hallway for a while. As we get to this little area here. So, let's explain the puzzle in short. There are these pillars. There is one, two, three, four sets of pillars. I'm gonna switch to the handgun because it's easier. So there's four gates. We'll call them gates. gates. Alright, so there's four gates, and if we don't pass through the proper set of pillars, so we could take on the first gate, there's one, two, three, four, five different possibilities. 
if we don't get the right possibility, the whole thing will loop and we'll get back into that tunnel. But if we do manage to get it, it will turn, um, it, it will, I'll just show you. It will look like uh, small little stars out of the pillar or coming out of the pillar. Now, I don't think we can check it this way, but you know what? Let's start by going all left. I don't remember if it's the same every time. And if you hear that sound, it means we were wrong. But, see this little uh, curtain of stars? That's the proper pillar we should have taken. So let's try. I'm not sure if this will work, but I'm just going to walk between all of them. And I'm going to go all the way to the end. Yeah, I'm going to do some testing on this puzzle. Otherwise, we'll just keep going left. Right? So, no curtain of stars. Let's keep going left. And it reset. Alright. Let's take this path. It's basically a lot of trial and error. Oh, okay, so this one is here, and that's it, I think. Did we get it? We got it, all right. So, uh, I'm not going to go back, but in case the pillars never change, and I think I had this combination before, uh, you can turn the video back and uh, double check. Okay, no, now I do remember there were some mutants around here. Not a big deal, maybe a snork, maybe a pseudo dog. It's never the same. But the heart of the oasis will be right here in the middle. There it is. Alright, yeah. It's just a lot of pseudo dogs. Luckily, Pip and our Merc friend, Vitka, the Executioner, managed to take care of them pretty easily. I think it was just two, but uh, with the uh, copy delusions of themselves, or even just one. Right, so we have the Heart of the Oasis, which kind of sucks, honestly. <laughs> So it gives a little bit of health restoration, it gives a lot of stamina recovery and a lot of bleeding control, but burn resist, electrical resist, chemical resist and psychic resist go down, which in my opinion is too big of a drawback to actually use this artifact. Now maybe if you run out of bandages and you need a uh, heal for your bleeds, you could use it, just keep it on you in uh, an artifact application module and put it on to cure the bleeds. But honestly, if you need an artifact, if, if you don't have enough med kits, bandages, and even like, what do you call the, the um, little red scripts that you... Tourniquet, there we go. Or tourniquets. You cure bleeding by this time. By the time you get to the heart of the oasis. I mean... What what the hell are you doing up north? Go, go back south, friend. Go farm some money in the south. Right. And we have a beautiful sunrise, which is uh, just going above the uh below the horizon but 
turn that off. Oh god, I love sunsets, not sunrises, sorry. I have a beautiful sunset here. Let's let's just stay here and enjoy this for a moment. There's very few peaceful moments in Gamma and when you have the time to just sit back and enjoy the sunset, take it. Right. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. Should we go after this yellow stash? There's a bandit base there. Yeah, let, let's do it. So there should be a little stash here. Though I'm not sure where it might be. Where? Where is this thing? Is there an underground entrance somewhere? Okay. Guys in the comments. If any of you has any idea where this is, could, could you please drop a comment? Because, uh, it ain't here. Okay, so, the golden stash is actually in a bandit base. I don't see anyone right now, let's... Let's grab the bigger gun. And I I am looking towards the sun, which is a, a pretty big tactical no-no. But yeah, we do have some bandits. All right, do we have anything used for cover? Skinny trees won't help. But that one will. Yeah, there's quite a few bandits over there. Oh, that has a gravity anomaly. You know what? We'll, we'll take it. We will take it. Not such a good vantage point, though. Ah! So satisfying. But we are taking rads. Okay, I don't think the base got alerted. Don't hear any bandits in the distance. Do I really have to take rad resistance for this? Uh. Right, so there were more bandits along the fence. There's a dead one over there. No idea how I'm not hitting that guy. Oh, he spotted me now. No, he's just patrolling. Okay, are, are we gonna have to get up close and brutal? Not a, not a very ecologist thing to do. I will do it. Okay. Okay, spotted one there. Gonna come this way, I think. Yeah, 
container area is not a fun place to fight. It's also highly irradiated. Come out! Don't eat pizza! Ecologist style. <laughs> okay. We did it. We cleared out the bandit base. Okay, where is this stash? I'm gonna guess it's underneath. Right? <coughs> nope, there is no way to get down there. So we're gonna loot these guys though. Ooh, bandit mask, that's nice. And one more here. Okay, so if it's not there, it's probably gonna be on top here. Not sure how you'd normally climb up there, but... Vaulting's a beautiful thing. Okay, another set of advanced tools. Great. I'm so happy I came this way. And you, you haven't seen this because it was off-screen, but I actually sold, like, Six or seven set of sets of advanced tools to a mechanic <laughs> between episodes. Because at some point there's just nothing to do with them. Okay, where is this one? It's gonna be on top here. <clears throat> and I am going to need to Here's some more rads. Hey, okay, can we have an exosuit? No. We do have the bolt off of an AS valve. Which is pretty cool. Don't get me wrong, we do need to fix up an AS valve, but I don't remember which part we needed. Okay, so now we can head back to Yano Station and finish the first part of the Artifact mission. So I will see you all there. Okay, here we are, back in Yano Station. Let's turn in Artifacts to Vladislav. Here you go, these are the Artifacts I could find. Huh, I didn't think you would actually manage. Good work, here is your reward. 5,000 rubles, thanks for nothing. Is there anything else I can help you with? Thanks to you, our computing cluster is busy with calculations around the clock. Information for analysis for years to come. Still, it was the right decision despite the risks. The team will be divided across the entire territory. Here our, our leader... Academician, academician Skabinski acted farsightedly. It is impossible for one person to comprehend such a large structure as a whole. Only by combining our thinking abilities could we come to success. Happy for you. <laughs> That's the <laughs> stupidest. Like, this guy's expl explaining, like, metaphysical ecologist stuff. And we're like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Happy for you. <laughs> like, like, you know, we're also an ecologist. We should be interested in this stuff. <laughs> yes, while you were out in the field, I received a new batch of scan data. As you might know, the zone keeps a lot of mysteries from us, and many anomalies have not been mapped yet. I will send you this preliminary scan data 
as it includes the approximate location of some unmapped anomalies. Please confirm if the data is right and keep an eye out for any artifacts. But be careful, please. There is bound to be some error in the location data. All right, no Northwestern Tunnel, Anomalous Train, and the Volkov Complex. Okay. So, this is the tunnel. The Anomalous Train is right here, and the Volkov Complex is here. But, I'm not crazy enough to do this at night. And, of course, I took a plant to the base. So, we're gonna take a little nap. And we will do it first thing in the morning. Plus, we need to drop our items anyway. Which I will do right here. See? Uh, let me think. So we have the anomaly in the train tunnel is going to be a very powerful electric anomaly. The anomaly in the train, if I remember right, is a comet, a burning anomaly. And I have no idea what's in the Volkov complex, but I'm expecting it to be maybe psychic, so... Twenty percent electrical, 35%. You know what? I'll take the diamond soup this time. And... Uh, I think we can drop the chemical resist artifacts. We can leave them back home. Yeah, I'm not sure what else I should take, so... I'll, I'll keep it. I'll, I'll just uh, keep these. Right, grab the beer, grab the vodka, grab the mutant parts. You're, you're getting a uh, rare glimpse into how I drop things in my stash, which might be very, very boring for you guys, but uh, you know what? I'm just gonna keep on doing what I'm doing. <laughs> Don't think we need so many grenades. Ah, maybe we do. Right, any other bullets? These will be sold. Actually, you know what? Let's do a little bit of cleanup in our bullets. Um... Am I still going to use 762 by 51 Probably not. Yeah, let's, let's get rid of a few things that I don't think I will be using. I'll get a lot more grenades from the monolith. Okay, mine? Am I going to use the mine ever? Um... No, the time for mines has passed. Just go ahead and trade everything. Get the mechanic, another set of advanced tools as well. And I am going to keep a glow stick. I always like to keep a glow, glow stick on me. Simply because there are some moments where you get into an electric anomaly and it just starts spazzing out both your flashlight and your night vision. And you know what? A good old glow stick can save your life in those cases. Sell the grenades, sell the bullets, and... Um, yeah, we'll keep the rest. Alright, I think we have enough Bye. money. Okay, guys, could you get the hell out of my way? Thank you. No. Who there? Bye. As hot. <laughs> Ooh, he sells an M4A1 protector. That's pretty cool as well. But not our thing. Ooh. ooh. 
Oh, I would love to get one of these. So expensive, though. And you know what? I definitely prefer the G46K over the M4A1 protector. M4 has 10 more mag size, but the accuracy is atrocious compared to the G36. Okay, so I think the vendor reset. He's no longer selling the Exo helmet. Makes me very, very, very sad. But you know what? I'm not worried. We'll we'll get it in time, I'm sure. Um, just sell most of these things, and you know what? I'm not even gonna drop the rest in the bag. Go down, take a little nap. Actually, I can drop these things. Oh, no! Not the bullets. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, I'm trying to spread my items a little bit in the stash. Because if you keep too many things in one container, not only will it go crazy every time you open that particular container, but the whole map just uh, starts lagging out. If you've seen those little lag spikes I've had before, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons. All right, let's let's make it nice and cozy over here. here. Pretty sure I left another one around here. Where is it though? There we go. Uh, hello. Am I out of matches? All right. First thing in the morning, we need to buy mat matches. So, we also no, have a be be bed here, just so we don't wake up too early. So, now you see why I usually don't keep the footage I have from me working in the base. It's because I get very disorganized and forgetful when I'm working on stuff in the, in the stashes. And uh, you would probably get so frustrated when you see me looking at the recipe for the fifth time and still not know what I need. Okay, so there was also an emission during the night, which is actually perfect for us. We want emissions so we can get more artifacts. We also need to repair our items and uh, we don't really have a lot of repair stuff in our stash. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy a few. We are doing pretty well on the money, so I don't mind getting just like a... A good amount of everything. Could you please stop that? Okay, um, I was just about to do the outro <laughs> when a Chimera attacked Hip and my Merc friend here. And by the time I came out, it was nearly dead anyways. I don't think I even have to bother <laughs> with Chimera. They, they just drop like flies around Hip and this other guy. Right, so. I am going to end the, uh, this episode here. I would have liked to do both sets of uh, artifacts in Jupiter, but with all the other little things we did, like taking the bandit base and fighting a pseudo giant and Carlix, also the part of the Oasis, we ended up just not having enough time. At least I don't think so. Because I would like to keep the episodes under one hour, so you have a less less of a long marathon per episode of watching me just stumble through anomalies. Which means, next episode we will do the rest of the Jupiter anomalies, and we will see what comes up next. I am honestly expecting 
the next anomalies to be in Zaton. But I'm not sure. So, we will see. I do believe there might be another set of anomalies here in Jupiter before that. I don't exactly remember, but we did do quite a lot. This episode, we managed to make a lot of money early just by turning in missions. We are now nicely set up in Yanov Station with our whole base. We managed to do another set of artifacts and we have another to do in Jupiter at least another and also we got the heart of the oasis and we will also have to go talk to the scientists in the mobile science lab and see maybe they want it maybe they'll pay me for it who knows but until then i am chromanim and as always i will see you all next time